So vitamin B3 has been getting a bit of heat lately and that is because of a research article that recently came out which seems to have found that too much niacin, which is one of the forms of vitamin B3, might increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. And since heart disease is the number one cause of death in the developed world, this is probably something we want to pay a little attention to and since I recently did a video talking about why we need vitamin B3, it's only right that I also discuss this new research. So if you want a quick explanation of what the deal is with this new research on niacin, you've come to the right place. So this is the study that everyone is referring to and it came out in February of this year, which seems like forever ago. But essentially what they found was that some of the metabolites of vitamin B3 seems to be associated with major heart events like heart attacks and strokes. Now metabolites are molecules that certain substances break down into, and the focus of this study were two molecules called 2PY and 4PY. Now, these are short for some very long chemical names, so this is what we will call them. Now niacin, when you consume it through food or maybe even a vitamin supplement, it goes through a few reactions in the body and breaks down into smaller molecules. And when you have too much niacin, it breaks down into these two guys over here. Now 2PY and 4PY seem to have pro-inflammatory properties and they may lead to inflammation in blood vessels, especially if too much of them are around. This can damage blood vessels and lead to heart issues later on. So in this study, blood samples from about 1,100 people were analyzed to see if there was anything in their blood that could predict any future heart issues. And they checked in with these people over three years to see how many ended up having heart issues during the time that passed. And what they found was that the people that had higher levels of 2PY and 4PY in their blood were at an increased risk of having major heart related events like heart attacks and strokes. And this is what we can see in this graph. Now let's just take a good look at the graph here. We can see four lines with different colors and they have Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1. And this is because they split the participants into four groups based on the amount of 2PY and 4PY that were in their blood. So Q4, the red line, had the most of those molecules in their blood. And we can see that they quite clearly had the most heart-related events over the years when compared to the other groups. And to make sure these results were valid, they looked at two more population groups, one American and one European, and they found a very similar pattern, which we can see here. The group with the most 2PY and 4PY in their blood for both of these extra groups had more cardiac events, so more heart attacks and strokes. Now vitamin B3 is a very important part of a balanced diet. It plays a large role in energy production and is also beneficial for skin health, among other things. In fact, in the past, it was also recommended as a cholesterol lowering method. Not so much anymore. So it's probably confusing to hear that such an important vitamin is being linked to heart disease. But what I want everyone to remember is that this study is talking about excess niacin. So when you have too much niacin, then this risk may appear. And the deficiency in vitamin B is also harmful to your health. So we still need to make sure that it's a part of our diets. The thing is though, vitamin B3 deficiency is not common. In fact, most of us are probably getting more than we need. The National Health and Nutrition Survey, which was done in America, found that the average amount of vitamin B3 intake from food and drinks were 31.4 milligram in men and 21.3 milligrams in women. This is nearly double what is actually needed and only 1% of people, according to the survey, were eating less than the recommended daily amount of vitamin B3. So it's not really a vitamin that we need to be focusing on increasing. Now in America, it is mandatory to fortify flour and cereals with vitamin B3 and many food products are fortified with this vitamin. This is done to just help prevent any deficiencies. But as you can see, deficiency is not a problem at the moment. And this study has now brought up the question, do we need to prioritize fortifying foods with vitamin B3 if too much of it could be harmful to our health? It's just something to think about and it's a good reminder that you can have too much of a vitamin or a mineral. Many people think that because they are good for you, you can't have too much. And so supplements and multivitamins are just taken without too much thought. But yes, you can have too much. 
So make sure you really need a supplement if you are going to take one. Now, look, the last thing I do want to say is that this study is the first to discuss this issue. It's not a perfect study either. The researchers don't have any specific information on how much niacin these participants were consuming, and that's quite important information if you want to link a nutrient to a health condition. You need to tell us what amount of this nutrient people were eating, because this study hasn't told us what amount of niacin is too much or what amount of niacin leads to these levels of 2PY and 4PY. We really need answers to those questions before anything can be done, so we need more studies. So hopefully that's helped clear things up. Again, this is just an extra video I wanted to put out. My usual weekly video is still out on Friday. So until then, keep playing the long game.